Bye, everybody. So welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for coming to our presentation tonight. Um, we have a series of um, uh, doctoral students that will be from our program here at the New Jersey City University Educational Technology Leadership Program, who are going to be pre presenting throughout the season. And tonight we have Michelle Zagombic. And she is a technology coach in Warren Township, Somerset County, where she's worked as a teacher since 1998. Michelle has provided educational technology trainings and workshops and presentations through various organizations such as ISTE, NJEC, NJECC, NJCU, and PADLA, and the EdTech team incorporated. She's also currently a doctoral student at NJCU in the EdTech leadership program here. She's part of cohort eight, and she's looking forward to presenting and preparing undergraduates and graduate students entering the field of uh, teaching with technology skills and training to use their own classrooms. So today she has a very special uh, presentation for everybody. I just wanna um, give you a couple of things uh, to for your your information. If you check up at the top of the chat and I will repost it, Michelle's created a website, which is one of the things she's presenting from today. So um, please feel free. Uh, let me just repost that there. If you'd like to open that and follow along, you can bookmark it as well if there's stuff that you'd like to come back to in the future. But that's what we're going to um, be able to uh, continue working with. And um, we are also, let me see. Oh, if you have questions along the way, please feel free to type them in the chat. And um, Michelle is going to give us some time here and there where we're going to reference the chat from time to time, and I'll be able to read your questions for you. So I promise we will get everyone's questions in. We have a great session set up for you today. And thanks again for taking your time to uh, join with us this evening. Thank Without you for having me, Dana. For Michelle? I really appreciate it. Um, so today we're going to be doing uh, sparking student engagement. I know that, you know, through this pandemic, we've had a lot of issues with student engagement. But to be honest, it's something we have all the time. We, we always uh, battle student engagement issues and keeping kids motivated. So um, some of the questions that you might have are, well, how do we keep people interested? Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through this website uh, that I built and I talk about a couple different strategies that you can use in a bunch of different ways. Um, some of them are, you know, low tech, some of them are high tech, you know, um, kind of strategies. Hopefully, uh, no matter what grade level you have, you'll find something for you. And as long as you get one or two things out of it, that's um, mission accomplished, you know. Um, but of course, feel free to bookmark this, come back to it anytime, share with people, I don't care. Um, that would be great. So we're looking at the need for speed. Uh, kids really like competitiveness. They like to be challenged to do things fast. Um, really appeals to our impulsive, <laughs> quick, quick, fast learners in today's society, especially in New Jersey. Um, I have some interactive websites to share with you that uh, you know are very engaging and you know have some suggestions on how to use them. Uh, I also really love using discussion with students. And of course, that's been a real challenge right now. So how to provide discussions online through the digital realm. Um, discrepant learning is something, I should capitalize that L, but um, discrepant learning is something, I don't know, I haven't really, it's something I kind of decided to use years ago. And I don't know if anybody else really does that. It's really looking at what's wrong with this picture um, and having the kids kind of figure it out, you know? <laughs> So that's fun. And then um, multimedia is, of course, you know, your, your art, your music, your video uh, kind of approach to really engage all those different modalities for the kids. So um, before we uh, go any further, though, I did want to talk about um, some of the elephant in the room kind of things. Let me just move the, the bar. Um, so, you know, you look at this picture and you're like, what is that? I Google searched for an elephant and this is what I found. And I'm like, that's only partially an elephant. That's like part turtle and part, what is that, pangolin or whatever those things are? And what kind of creature is that? And that's one of those things that you want to look for. You want to make the kids or whoever you're teaching go, what? You know, and let them think about it. So anytime you're picking, selecting pictures to use, see if you can um, engage them. You know, I always tell the kids when they build presentations, don't pick the first one you see. Really look through um, all of the search results and find compelling images that you can speak to and put, explain reasons why you're including them in your presentation. So I did this because it makes you go, huh? Um, what, what is the elephant in the room? You know, a lot of times when it comes to engaging your kids, it's 
it, you know, it's a reflection of how we act and how we behave. And if we're tired and sleepy, like this weird elephant creature, then they're gonna kind of approach things the same way. So I, I don't expect us to be happy all the time. None of us are happy all the time. As it is, I'm like getting over a head cold. So if you see me sip tea once in a while, and it is a head cold, we all got tested and we're, I'm vaccinated and all that fun stuff. So, um, but yeah, we still get head colds. And so we can't be happy all the time. So what other approaches can we use besides just being happy? So, you know, sharing yourself with them, being human, getting down on your, you know, on your knees or, you know, sitting on the floor with them and working with them in the trenches, like actually going at a, an activity or a worksheet with them, sitting with them and being with them. Um, getting excited about what you teach, showing you're interested in, in the content and telling them why it's important. So I think that's like, you know, one of the key elements that we often forget is we can use all the strategies we want, but we have to have the right attitude going towards it in order to get them on board. All right, so let's start getting into it and we're gonna dig down into uh, speed. So for speed, um, I know there's lots of low tech or no tech ways you can incorporate it. You know, a lot of times in the past we've used, you know, those little teacher bells that they ring. You could give them to each group and have the group that figures it out first ring the bell and they're like, well, you know, or whistles or buzzers. You could have them wave flags or show, show a ticket or you could pull a ticket and, you know, you can use timers. You know, all of those are no tech required. Um, or there's low tech. So I have sound clips right here. This should be bringing you to another website. Is it, are you seeing free sound open on your screen? Is everybody seeing free sound? Nod? Yes. Okay, great. So free sound is just one of many, many different websites. You can search sounds right here and just search for like boo, you know, and they love it if you literally just go in and put into your Google sites like a boo. And <laughs> they're like, did you just boo me? That's creepy. I don't know what that one is. All right. So the kids love that. They think it's hysterical. They start laughing. So um, I don't know if you realize, but in Google, um, Google Slides, actually, if you go into your slides, you can import your audio now. So if I go into Google Slides and you just do insert and it'll do insert audio. The only caveat is this, I will show you real quick. Here's insert audio. And it asks you, what audio do you wanna insert? And you're gonna see it's my drive. So whatever audio clip you want to insert, it has to be uploaded to your Google Drive first and it'll put it in here. So that's the yay. So you could, you know, you could put a picture in here and, you know, put the sound in there. You could have it start playing automatically. If they go to that slide, you could have it go to that slide and say, yay. Do you guys know how to, well, we could talk about that in the Q&A. If you have questions on how to get your slide to go from one to the next or anything like that, let me know. We'll go back to that. But uh, I'm going to assume that you might know how to do that. Um, so to get your sound clip, you go to free sound and you, you're going to download it. You know, you just go in here and then you download. Um, there's the download option is right. Uh, I think it's right here. Login. To, oh, it's going to make us log in. So you log in. It's a it's a free account. It's no big deal. Um, and there's lots of different sound websites like this. There's Sound Bible. There's a whole bunch of them. And you can just go on, get your sound, download it, and then upload it to your Google Drive. So you can go right in there and pop it into your slides. Um, there's visual cues. I thought this was really cool. This is um, sensory timers. So a lot of the kids like to see timers. And these are like really engaging. You can like click on one of them. You can be like, oh, today we're going to use the marble time timer for your activity. And you're going to have you know, 15 minutes to get it done. I'm gonna just pick for the sake of time just to show you what it looks like. See how, see how they can watch it and they're like, oh no, oh no, we're running out of time. You know, as they're trying to solve questions or group work or anything like that. It's a real nice visual aid and you can like just have a great time in here. Like you could do a different one every day. <laughs> There's a lot of fun, fun stuff in here for you to try. Um, okay, let me go back here. We've got digital timers. Here's how to get your, this is the same site. Um, 
it's really easy to set, you know, you just do your, you know, I'll do one second set and then start. And then it's just an audible bing, you know, to let them know. I know it's kind of annoying, but again, you want them to be like, whoa, I gotta stop, you know, that's, that's important. Um, also, this one is really, really cool. It can do a bunch of different things. It has your, um, it has your clock in here and it has a timer you can set. This is more professional because so I know um, some of our uh, people, participants in tonight are working with the older group. So V clock would be maybe a little bit more professional for them. Um, but you can see it's got a lot of different features here, even different time zones, which is fun, just in case you're working with people in different parts of the world. Uh, so have fun playing with that. Um, this is how we get a little bit more digital savvy. So what I did was um, I've created a couple different types of what I call research races. Uh, this one is a speed trap. So when you set up a speed trap, I actually made a screencast for you in case you're like, I don't know how to do this. You can always come back and press play. Um, but this is the uh, sample document I used with the students. I'm gonna expand it so you could see. Um, and you all should have access to this. Is basically, I was teaching the kids about Hinduism and I was like, I get asked a thousand questions on the same thing. Like, why are cows sacred? Or what's a, what's a bindi, which is, you know, the dot and the forehead or what is, why are they always wearing, you know, the sari? What's the sari for, you know? So I put a frequently asked questions kind of thing. Seventh graders, you know, they have these questions. They're innocent questions. They want to know the answers. So I put together a whole bunch of like questions that I get asked a lot and I put together a chart for them. And you can see that the students actually had one person that they selected as their recorder and the other people in the group were the researchers. So the only the recorders had access to this document and could edit and they had to pick their own color. You can see, I think down here, I had them pick their color. Okay, so this is their group blue, their group, group red. And I said, you guys can go and try to answer question number one, question whatever question you want. We're gonna start at the top. And once that question has been answered to the teacher's satisfaction, meaning it has enough detail, it answers the question and it's a credible source. I close it and I give that group a point. So we're gonna have a winner, a group winner at the end, whoever gets the most questions right with the best accuracy and the most credible websites are gonna win. And I actually further down here, I'm like, which one be specific, you know? And it, I put comments on the side as they were racing each other to try to figure out they said Brahma is the first God. And I was like, which one be specific? So they added, they added more detail. And you could see if one was missing a URL, you know, and I would just kind of keep on, I'm like, this one's closed, this one's closed. I don't know. At some point, I, I think I resolved comments somewhere along the way. Oh, this one I said plagiarism because they just copied and pasted from the website. Uh, so that was kind of cool too. So that's kind of one, one trick you can do is have them work in teams or in groups and try to race to finish like, oh, once they're all working on question nine, but Blue got it, they closed it first. And they're like, oh, and then now, now they have to move on to a different question that's still open and they can race against each other. So that's something I would recommend more at a, a higher level. I recommend those, uh, those are free searches where they can go on the internet and find the websites themselves. Uh, so you would want to do that probably no younger than fifth grade, even there maybe, I mean, I did it with seventh, uh, so that's probably more of your um, higher functioning, you know, higher grade level students. Uh, but the basis is here, you know, you just make your topic, your topic, you have your questions, whatever your rules are, you put your rules in there. I have it all in here for you so you can kind of see how I, you know, develop your grouping, uh, review the rules, and then consider your file access, set your time frame, get them that that clock and off they go. And they have so much fun with it. Um, research races are similar. <clears throat> and this one is a guided search. So what I did was this is grades two and up. And you'll notice with the younger ones, they get really excited. So you might have to pause uh, for a moment and say, let's calm down, um, you know, because they just get so excited about doing races. These are um, sample slides right here. Um, so in fact, I think it's all the way at the end here. This was on uh, Harriet Tubman and they basically, I gave them these, let me see. 
So I gave them these resources. It's like a web scavenger hunt, but the difference is with a guided race, you're giving them the resources. You don't give them free, they, they don't have a free search. You found the resources and you know those answers are inside of them. And then they kind of follow suit where it's similar in that you can see, I give them the directions. It's like a stoplight. I say all of these slides, oh, here are the resources. As a team, they can watch them. Uh, they can, you know, there's like one of them is a video, one of them's a TED ed, there's eight facts. And somewhere in there is there, there are the answers. So you can, you could scale this way down to your little guys have one website and just like two or three questions, like one question on each slide, like you could really, really scale this down. But question one, what was her real name? So again, they kind of race and when they figured it out, they can turn the background of the slide green, meaning that they're done. It's go. And if it's approved, I turn it to red. Nope, wrong. Go back, go fix it. And I have uh, thinking questions or challenging questions at the bottom uh, to make them like think a little harder. Like this is the, mm, like what injury happened to her, but then at a more a higher level, what permanent damage did this cause? Did this hurt or help her? So that this one they could find right, maybe right away, but this one as a group, they might have to think it out and talk it out to come up with their answer. I like that communication component. So that's really important. Um, so again, here's uh, directions. If you wanna learn how to do an approach like that with your kiddos, feel free to uh, watch them over. And that is the need for speed. Are we good? Does anybody have any questions or are we good to move on? We're all good? All right, Dana says we're good. All right, inter, uh, interactive sites. So for our interactive websites, um, here are some that I really, really like uh, that I wanted to share with you. This one's classroom screen. If you haven't used this before, it's really amazing, especially for the little guys. Uh, although who's to judge? Use it in higher ed. Let's see what happens, right? Especially our pre-service teachers, they should use this. So you click launch now and it's going to give you a background and you can change that background and make it whatever you want. Maybe I'm feeling more beachy and I'll go there. Um, you have a name generator. See, it says with, three, with a free account. If you paste in all of your students' names, whether you have them from Google Classroom or your grade book or whatever, you paste them in here and then you can randomize your students. Um, I should have put more randomizers in here. I have more, but you put your students in here like Tim, and Jean and Jane, I don't know, Jamie, Jamie, okay. And then who are we gonna land on? Oh, the person to answer today's question is Jamie, right? Uh, so that's kind of fun. They have a dice, uh, roll the dice. Let's see, whoever student number seven has to answer this question. Um, that's fun, here, let me close this, use the X. Um, and then use this, close the X. Um, here's your sound level. This one's really, really cool. You have to allow your microphone, but see how it's going up with sensitivity? You can set the sensitivity yourself. You're like, oh, it's too sensitive. So I can change it where it's more or less sensitive. But what you do is you tell your class, nope, if we get into the red section, it's too loud, right? So you can set that for your kids. You can set an alarm with it, uh, which is really cool. Uh, media, you could put your own pictures in here, video, web, you can use your webcam if you want to take a picture, embed things. Um, it's really cool. Generate a QR code on the spot. Uh, you can draw right on the screen. Yeah, there it is, drawing. I'm drawing, I don't even know what, spirals, flowers, four-leaf clover, yay! Um, text box, uh, this is interesting, your work symbols, like here, let me close this so that way I can move this down. You can see we have, we want just, shh, we want silence right now. Or, ooh, we just want to whisper. You know, this is whisper time. Ask a neighbor, time to talk to your friend, or let's work together. So, you, so they could see when you're choosing, like, oh, time to be quiet. You know, it's a nice visual uh, for, for the little guys, but big kids too, why not? If you um, have them working on something, you wanna manually set a traffic light. When it says stop, you know, you're gonna put it on the red. Pretty cool. Here's your timer, stopwatch, clock, you know, calendar. You, lots of fun stuff in there, right? Lots of fun. Um, great stuff to share with all of your teachers. 
Mentimeter, you might know, polling I think is really important. Um, if you haven't tried it, this one is Mentimeter is free. Of course, there's you know premium versions, but there's so much we can do with free. So what I did was I put a Thanksgiving survey in here. And if you feel like voting, feel free. Um, what's your favorite Thanksgiving dish? I did have uh, some of our staff use this uh, earlier today with their students. So here are the live results so far. I don't think many people did it yet, but let's just see. And uh oh, six people responded, but it kind of reset. Why did it do that? Let's see. There it goes. So we're, we have a tie between turkey and stuffing, but you can give the kids access to this, the voting and the results at the same time so they could see the bars change. Uh, and you can put pictures in there for it too, for the little guys. So that way, well, who, we all love visuals, right? I mean, I, I definitely wanna vote more that I see the picture of the turkey and the cranberry than if I didn't have it. So I recommend putting those pictures in there to help those guys out. Um, so that's a little something to help you. Uh, Google Classroom, the reason why I have this open is because you can, you can do this kind of stuff in Google Classroom too. I don't know if you know that. You can, you can post questions like, how many stars would you give the Macy's Day Parade? You know, um, that's a fun question if, I don't know if you're gonna watch it, but um, here's what the question looks like to the students. And I'll show you how to get those emojis in a second. Um, you also could, if we go back to the class, what are your plans for Thanksgiving? You can ask this question. And actually, if I go in and edit this question, I just wanted to show you real quick over here. I know our faces are on over here, but see where it says students can reply to each other. You can make it a chat where the kids can be like, oh, really? I'm going to my aunt's too, but I don't really like her stuffed clams very much, you know, or whatever. Like they can actually have a chat back and forth and talk to each other in Google Classroom, which is really cool. Um, or if you just want to ask them how their weekend was and you want it private to yourself, take that off. Um, so that's kind of a fun trick if you haven't tried it yet with Classroom. And the final Classroom question I have is, uh, everything's in the way. We are all in the way all right here. Um, what's your favorite F? If you're doing the letter F, okay, kids, we're doing the letter. So now I'm in a K through five environment, right? Do you like friends, family, or food? What's your favorite? You know, and you could put emojis here, even if you have the little, little ones, um, and they would pick and you would be able to see the student answers and they could see their poll results right here. So you don't have to use Mentimeter. You don't have to learn a new program. You can do this all in Google Classroom, which is kind of cool. Um, so Emojipedia, if you haven't used it yet, is a great website. You can literally click on it and get any type of, so let's say I just want to put in um, a burger. You can click in there and be like, oh, there's the hamburger. So I click on it and I click copy and then I can paste it into anything. Like you can paste it anywhere it would take plain text. You just literally control V and paste that sucker in there. And it is great. I use it all the time, but the kids love it when you ask them what they think. And uh, that's my suggestion uh, to start with for interactive sites. Um, besides that, you can uh, give them websites that you want them to go to that you know are interactive and ask them these questions that are very generic. Uh, you know, what's your favorite part of that website? What's the most important thing you learned? What, what do you think the designer should change about the website? What would you say to the creator of that website if you could speak to them? Or what questions do you have now that you've explored that website? And here's like a Gapminder. I use this with my students. I'll show you it real quick. Um, this just this one page on this one website. Um, it has all of the different population uh, numbers for different countries. So the ones further on the left have, here we are in a way again, but um, it has the lower life expectancy. So down here, this is the average of 52 years in 2018 for Central African Republic. And the smaller the circle is the smaller population. The bigger the circle is bigger populations. You can see the colors are for the continent is it is on and then you can see as you go up in income what's happening here right here's the united states our average is uh let's see if we look over to the left here's united states 78.9 it says and then our income is at 60 our average 
per person per capita, right? Income is sixty-two and a half thousand dollars per person. So how does that affect, how does income affect life expectancy? And there's one other really cool, like if you look over here, you can do it by country, you can do a whole bunch of things, but watch this. I just want you to see when you hit play, um, all of these bubbles are gonna show you what happens over time. It's a time lapse. So watch what happens in 1918. See all the life expectancies down here and you could talk about what's changing, what's changing. Um, in 1917 and 1918 is when the Spanish flu, like our COVID hit, and you're gonna see what happens to the bubbles, but watch the bubbles, all the different continents and countries as they grow, 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 and healthcare in increases, economy increases. Whoa, who's that? Oh, that's the United States. Did you see what happened? Well, I think I might have to rewind it. Let me go back to uh, here and press play again. Look what happens in 1917. Here we go. Oop, did you see it? Was it too fast? Everything went, poof. the whole world collapsed, the population, everything, life expectancy went, went down. Uh, so this is really cool. The kids can interact with this, just look at the one continent. They can look at line graphs. There's a whole bunch of uh, you know, features on the side that they can play with. Um, there's all different types of maps, really, really cool. Uh, for them to look at. And they can do these generic questions with any of these sites or any sites you like. You don't have to make targeted questions for everything. You can just make some base questions and just give them a cool site and let them explore, which I think they really enjoy that uh, independence too. Um, GIFs, I, GIFs, GIFs, GIF to me is peanut butter, but whatever. Longstanding argument, but I love gifts, the kids love gifts, and they are so impressed when you find a GIF. If you haven't found GIFs yet or know how, you can put them in anywhere you could put in an image. So if I just wanna find a GIF on, um, I don't know, it's a Thanksgiving carving turkey GIF. You literally can Google it just like that. Um, you can find that there's GIFs right here. Giphy is a very popular site. If you go to images, it will pull them all up for you too, right? Okay, and then here, so you can find, like if you click over here, it usually, see how it loads it for you? This is called the preview pane and you right click on it, you do save image as, and you just type in, you know, turkey or something. Make sure it's saving it as a GIF. You go to your untitled presentation and you just do insert. I know I'm not dealing with the layout right now, but you do upload uh, and then you find where you put it. That's a challenge, quick access. No, oh, where did my turkey go? Here it is, image open and see, it's like opening it here. Uh, uh, and then I'll change the layout because I can't deal with it. See how like the kids are like, whoa, they knew how to do GIFs or GIFs. Um, so they, they love it. You can get silly, goofy cartoon ones. You can type in turkey cartoon carving or clip art, you know, but make sure you put GIF on it if you're searching for the images and they'll be so mad impressed with you. Oh, they love it. By the way, you can make your own GIFs in Screencastify. I don't know if you know you can do that, um, but that's another story. All right. Any questions yet? Or are we still good? Dana, we're still good? All right, thank you. All right, so here's digital discussions. Um, I think for all of us, we really respond better when we know people are listening to what we have to say. Um, so I had some ideas for that. You know, like if you were going no tech, you could, remember when we used to pass notes to each other and used to fold them into cute little footballs and stuff? like. Yeah. Show the kids how to pass notes. Like, well, maybe not a good idea, but um, you could use hand signals or gestures. You can, you know, it, let's do this without speaking, guys. Let's see if we can communicate, you know, and show them a couple hand signals and see if they can, you know, try that out. Um, encourage them to use eye contact. That's something so lacking these days. Facial expressions, you know, smile, nod, like things like that. You can use Emojipedia and find like, you know, those emojis that say sad face, happy face, you know, that kind of thing. Um, you can email each other, but here's something called Moat. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but there's, I, we have this as a district. I don't know if you do, um, but it's, it's, uh, 
free notes, free voice comment notes that you can make to each other in any document you want, just like you would, I don't know if you can see that screen right there. I'll try to see if I can make it bigger. Um, see how right there, when you add the extension, it brings up this little moat feature guy. And instead of doing a comment, you click on the moat and it actually will record your voice. It'll record your voice. So instead of writing to them what you're thinking, you speak it and you they can hear then your tone and your inflection and they have a better idea of how you're feeling about what you're saying. So that's a really, really cool tool to explore. And if you want me, if we have time, uh, I will go into it and explore that further with you. Um, Screencastify, again, if you don't have a screencasting tool, this is a great one I highly recommend. You can make MP3s for your audio clips. You can make GIFs <laughs> uh, with Screencastify and it is free. And I think it's up to, it's either five or 10 minutes for the free version. The premium version allows you to edit and things like that. Um, so again, a really, really great tool. Uh, and if we have time, I'll, I'll go dig, dig into it with you. Um, okay, so we're on digital discussions. So one thing that, uh, you know, I showed you the Google Classroom, but one thing I've done with students is show them videos and tell them we're gonna talk to the producers of the video. So this video is, I'll just jump ahead so you can see. The, king and the, queen. The, the kids were like, whoa, somebody computer generated like a whole thing on the Palace of Versailles. They're like, no way, that's so awesome. And I was like, well, let's talk about what we wanna to say to them, you know? So uh, what we did was we did post uh, to the community on uh, YouTube using the comments feature. Now the students don't have access to the comments feature, but the teachers do. So what I did was I said, my fourth period class was so impressed with your video. And I told them the reasons why, but we, we crafted a comment to the producers together about what we wanted to say. And so I gave them a shout out. I said, you know, this class period said they wanted me to contact you. And they wrote back to us and they were like, oh my gosh, they're, like they felt like they were so famous. <laughs> Kids are funny. Um, anyway, if you want some tips on how to structure comments for video producers, um, I've created this here, but ideas to incorporate. I always tell the kids you can ask it because we don't, when you look at YouTube comments or any comments anywhere, there's so many people that are like time busters. They don't like put anything constructive in there. So I'm like, let's find ways to make our comments smart. So asking a question is a smart way to add a comment. If you have a co question for them, giving them a suggestion on things they could improve on in a kind way, of course. If you make personal connections, like, oh, I've been through this, I wanted to share that with you. Or of course, praise for something specific instead of nice job man is always recommend. But to, to be able to pinpoint and say, I really like that part where you did this, like to provide evidence. So I have this for you. You're um, welcome to use it if you want at any point. Um, I have a, this was one of the activities I did this with grade five. I made this uh, game board where the kids could pick and choose what they wanted to do. And they had to, the directions for the game board was in the middle. But if they finished early, I said, here are some, you know, videos and the videos that you watch, they don't have to be professional. Like this one was created by a teacher and her students produced it. So we were looking at it to try to determine what was right, what was accurate, what we liked, what we didn't like. And we're not gonna watch, we're not gonna watch the whole video, but um, just to give the kids an idea, like you don't have to go, you know, we can watch some fun videos too. Uh, you know, and try to determine the credibility, consider the source, how did they do for kids that age, you know, like, and I had them fill out this um, feedback form. And I said, if they were chosen, we would put the comments up for them. Um, and here are some tips on how to give some good feedback, constructive, formative feedback uh, for the kids. If you want to use it, you are welcome to do so. Um, Back channeling is another great idea. If you haven't tried back channeling before, it's really, really cool. Um, what back channeling is, is you go to, you have a video 
And while the video is playing, the kids chat in the background. So you can do this on your smart board, smart TV, you have the video up there. And then on their Chromebooks, they can be on the chat talking to each other about things they're seeing in the video, which is really cool. It's like an ongoing chat and you're on there with them. So you can help make sure that they're using good judgment. Um, this one is just the actual uh, sample form that I gave to the teachers uh, to give to their students. This was the video. And then down here, uh, I actually had two classes chatting together at the same time. And then here were the discussion points. I actually picked out things I wanted them to focus on that were in the video to help guide their chat right, their discussion. So that was pretty cool. And up here I had them, you know, I said, pick your own font, make sure you're 12 point, choose your color, just so we could see where the speakers change in the chat field. So hopefully um, that helps for you. If you go down here, so your comments would be in the insert comment feature. This one I did with seventh grade, this one, um, it, they did it wrong. I put in the directions to do a chat. And then what they did was, I just wanted to show you like, oh, they chose their own spots and they sort of chatted, but they didn't chat with each other. See how they each chose their own. They're like, this is my spot. This is my spot. And they just kind of more like took notes. And I kind of have used this as an example for this is not the right way to do it. Although do they learn? Yeah, they learned. They were into it. They were totally into the discussion, but they weren't doing a uh, true back channeling. So this one was a little bit more true and they changed all of the font at the, which to, you know, maintain um, confidentiality here. We, we took all of it. We, I changed it all to the same font, took all their names out and blah, blah, blah. The other one, I have their names, but it's only first names. So I think it's okay. Um, so this is where they're actually talking to each other about the, the um, industry of smuggling cows between India and Bangladesh. And they were going back and forth about what they were seeing and how they felt about it. And it was really a great discussion where they went back and forth with each other about it. Um, so I thought that was super cool. And I hope you like that too. All right, um, so that is digital discussions. Do we have any questions or we're still good? We are still good. All right, here is, and how are we doing on time? That's another thing I wanna ask. Time is good, we're at uh, 6.42. Oh, perfect, okay. So here's discrepancy. So this is the what, what's wrong with this picture sort of thing. Um, I like to do this because I, sometimes I like to pretend like I'm really naive and I don't know anything's wrong and I give them something to look at or I show it to them and I wait for them to be like wait a minute something I don't know and like waiting for them to like start talking to each other like looking at each other like is she crazy I, I don't know like you know uh it's it's really fun to like pull their leg a little bit you know um so it's the the idea or the concept is something's wrong with this picture right um so that's my, you know, suggestion. You don't have to do it like that all the time. You can tell them something is wrong. You know, let's figure it out. Like this one, uh, I presented it as if it was true, and they were, they were like, "What is going on?" I'm like, "Let's look, guys. It's the Palace of Versailles," and they're like, "Oh," and then they're like, "Oh," because there's a swimming pool. And there's a perfume counter and she sits on the roof and she's eating strawberries and drinking champagne. So they're like, wait a minute, like that's not really the palace of Versailles. So we found out we're like, wait a minute, let's use our clues, right? So on YouTube, like a lot, one of the things I try to point out to kids is to look, look at the clues, look at who's the creator, where is it coming from? Like, what's the rating, you know, that kind of stuff. When was it published? And this one, it says a Waldorf Astoria. Uh, it's a hotel. It's the what's well, what's the meaning behind this this creation? Live like a princess. They want you to live like a princess. Come to their hotel, right? Um, this one I thought was super cool. I I just love this guy. I should I should see more of his stuff. But he did some. I told him something's wrong in this. No, what's up, MTV? Princess. Welcome to my house, this is Chris. All right. 
So he literally, we were talking about the accuracies in this video. We were like, is he in the palace of Versailles? Yeah, he actually is. Is he really King Louis the 16th? No. Does he give us any data? No, actually, when you watch the whole video, like there's nothing, it's super funny. It's really engaging. It's short. When you pick your videos, you want them to be short, right? Five minutes or less, sort of like if you can. Um, but yeah, he, he, it's just like, okay, something's wrong. Can you see if you can figure out what it is? And they're like pointing out like little details that they're seeing. And then we kind of piece it together. Like this is more of a comedy shtick, but like, so worthy. And he was in the palace of Versailles. So they got a tour you know, uh, of the palace, so I, they loved it. Um, here's just some, some ideas for you if you're using discrepant uh, video, you know, consider your source information. Is there a channel? Who's their target audience? Uh, make a list of observations. What can you infer out of what you're watching? Uh, feel free to stop the video and just discuss as a class, like if there's something that is making them laugh, just stop it and be like, why y'all laughing? Like what's, you know, you know, and they can, you know, just have fun with your kids because so, so often we forget to do that. Um, and, you know, also to consider video quality, because one thing I know I'm not presenting this today, but video production is a great tool to assess your students. So if you decide to incorporate video production, it's good to look at what others produce and say, this is what I like, and this is what I don't, and this is ways we can change things and make it better. Uh, you know, it's always a good thing to kind of use a critical eye when you look at things, right? So um, another thing about discrepancy is it doesn't always have to be about what's wrong, but it's about anything that can make you think, like that emoji that's like, hmm, you know, and it's like, eh, I'm thinking something, I wanna check on that. So if you wanna check on something, this website, Snopes, I don't know if you've ever used it. Um, it's the oldest and largest database online that has like urban legends and hoax uh, kind of you know, stuff. Anything that's a rumor that you get on Facebook or through email and you're like, I don't know about that. You can literally search in here for anything and be like, you know, I, you know, I don't know what you want to put in. I think I searched for Princess Diana the other day and I felt like that was like a safe, um, oh, they are trying to raise money. I do, I did give them $5 by the way, because I do value this website because I was like, well, I'm using it in a presentation, I might as well go ahead and uh, donate to them. So keep keep them alive. So what happens is they actually hire an, a real research team and they give them money. This is their job to go and research and fact check whether these rumors are true. And you can see all of the Princess Diana stories that they've followed up on with the dates. And then when you go into it, um, I think I looked at this one, did Princess Diana leave Harry a 10 million inheritance? And when you go in, it tells you right up at the top, here's the claim, and then it'll tell you their rating. And it'll say whether it's true, mostly true, false, somewhat false, and it'll tell you why. And it'll, it'll give you like the, the, um, the actual article, it'll tell you the facts they found and all that. Good for your higher ed learners. Uh, so you might really enjoy that. Especially, I know, I think it's, I think one of you said you were working in the medical field. That would be a great place to look for some of the like pharmaceutical rumors that are going around. Really awesome. Um, when credibility comes into question, you can show them things like this. This is a, um, a map that I thought was, it's like 20, it, this is list 25. They have some really cool stuff, but they showcase like 25 different maps that you can look at to change the way you see the world. And I'm like, oh, that's cool for, you know, introducing geography and map making. But as you play it, you're like, huh. Like towards, oh, there's the credits. If you like the video you just saw, yeah. there are all the most photographed places in the world. And number one. And these are all the places where you can get eaten by a great white shark. So what you could do with this is you have 20 something kids in your class be like, each of you is getting a map and you're going to go and research and see if that's actually true <laughs> and set them free and see if they can prove or disprove with credible facts, whether or not these maps are accurate and see what they have to say about it. And list 25 they have a whole channel, like you could use any of their videos for something like that. All right, are, any questions or we're good? We're good? All right, I'm on to the last one, people. <laughs> All right, multimedia. 
so multimedia, I, I, I love music. Um, if any time you get a chance to bring music and you get that musical worm stuck in your head, bring it in, uh, bring it in, make it connect. You can make almost anything connect to what you're doing that day. Um, some of it's obvious, like here was Bastille Day by Rush. And what I did was in, <laughs> in here, I made targeted questions where I'm specifically talking about the band and what their performance was. Here's their performance. You can watch it on your own because it's gonna open with an ad. Here's the lyrics I gave the kids. Anytime you can put this stuff all into a one document for the students. So it's one-stop shopping. Yes, one-stop shop, right? Here's the questions. You could just push this out by make, uh, make a copy for each student and they could put their answers right in there. Uh, what's the tone of the song, you know, which, whose side are you on, which estate would you support, blah, blah, blah. So those are targeted questions. But if you see on the other side, too many windows. Um, over here, I use Revolution by the Beatles to find out if they could try to define what a revolution was. This was like our intro to the Industrial Revolution. Uh, what's the tone, key terms, what's their message? And I was like, what connection can you make to, to what we're doing? And they had to try to figure out and piece it together. Like, why am I bringing the song in when we're starting to learn about the industrial revolution? And that's not what they're talking about is industrial revolution, but some of their lyrics indicate change and it's better for the world. So maybe like we can make a definition for what is a revolution. Um, here's some other songs I've used. I, I've used uh, uh, Sh Sheb Mami is pretty amazing. He's a real popular uh, Algerian musician and he performed with Sting Desert Rose. And in the beginning he does this, just this beautiful um, Arabic language just to introduce them to the language so they can hear the tone. I'm trying to get it to play. The greatest singers in the world. I just wanna give you just a little hint of what it's like. So that just gives you an idea, like in the, for the kids too. And you know, you don't have to answer all these questions while you're watching a video. Like you can, like I, you know, just let them enjoy it. Let them sketch what they hear for that song. Just sketch whatever you're thinking of, or come up with your own questions. And if you wanted to, and if you had time for it, I know time is always of the essence, but. Uh, here's the backstory from Sting as to why and how he and Cheb Mami got together. And again, we're not going to watch an advertisement. You can give the kids if they want to follow Cheb Mami on Spotify, right? Hey, kids. They're like, oh, she does Spotify too. <laughs> they always love that. This one was um, Bloody Sunday when we were doing the Russian Revolution. And when they listened to the lyrics, I, again, I pretended like I didn't know what was going on. And I played this for them and I gave them the lyrics and they were like, this wasn't the Russian Bloody Sunday. I'm like, nope, it wasn't. They're like, this sounds like it might have been in Ireland or something. I'm like, they're like, wait, how many Bloody Sundays were there? So then we looked into that. And then I said, moral of the story is don't go out protesting on a Sunday. <laughs> You know, so uh, so that's a little bit of that. Here's art. Um, I have brought artwork into uh, class as well. Here's with targeted questions, you know, um, to introduce St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre in the uh, French society. But um, it was a fight between the Protestants and the uh, Catholics. And I used the, you know, the Monday night football theme song to introduce it. And they were like, oh, and we talked about how football is connected too. like, you know, it's a big fight between two groups and like, you know, so they kind of got into it. They got engaged. This is an artist study. Um, he did a lot of really cool pictures. Now for the kids, I think I just picked his specific, I actually pulled these crossing of the Alps pictures and I'm like, why are there, I, I didn't give him this page because of the nudity for like the seventh graders, but I gave them all these different pictures of the uh, Napoleon crossing the Alps. And I'm like, why are there seven different portraits of Napoleon crossing the Alps? <laughs> and why are they all different, you know? And they're like, you know, so that was kind of a fun thing for them to check out. And actually when he crossed the, that when that picture was drawn, he was actually on a mule. 
uh, he wasn't on a horse, on a horse at, all. at all. So they all, they liked learning that too. The mistruths of the paintings, the portraits. Um, some videos just make the kids go, whoa, like that happened. Like this is somebody's live video of getting stuck in a sandstorm. And the kids were like watching the sandstorm advance and hearing people in the background. And they're like, no way, it's getting closer. <laughs> Uh, but if you do something like that, be prepared to answer some tough questions like, you know, what's going to happen to the people that are filming this right now? And what can people do to prepare for that? And what's a sad storm like? You know, is it dangerous? You know, that kind of thing. So um, before I close and we have a little discussion, um, just I did want to point out um, I've done some research into copyright. Uh, this is I, I know there there's a lot of copyrighted material on here. I'm not making any money off of this. It is for education, teacher education. It is in an educational setting. Uh, this does count as an educational setting. Um, so through my research, I actually did uh, some doctoral work on this. So um, I believe it falls under fair use. Uh, however, you never know. There's a really, really fine line. There's a gray area when it comes to uh, copyright. So if there's any violations, please uh, let me know. I can take material down, but I think I've done the best I can to be safe, but still give you a true feel of what, what I was doing. I wanted you to have like a, an accurate rep representation of how to do this and some real student samples and, um, you know, to, to have the exact things I used in class just so you could get a real feel for it. So, uh, so that being said, if you need to contact me, uh, my email is here. Um, I know I had people from my last webinar I did on Google Drawings. Uh, they were watching it in one of the master's classes at NJCU, and they didn't have a, the link to the site. They were watching just the video. They didn't have the link. link. So they're like, can you please give us the link to the website? I'm like, here you go. Pass it on to all your friends. <laughs> I'm very uh, open with that. I do have a Twitter account. I, I uh, don't post as often as I should just because of time. Uh, but I plan to do more in the future. And I do love Twitter for getting my information too. All right. You guys have any questions? You've been awfully quiet. What's happening? <laughs> well, it doesn't seem like we have any questions in the chat, um, but I wanted to, we do have a really nice comment. Colleen had mentioned that this was one of the most informative and useful webinars that she's been to in a long time. So she's um, she thinks it's great for teachers and she thinks it has given us great strategies. It's energizing. It gave us great tools and uh, it's restored her faith in professional development opportunities, which is huge. So thank you for sharing that. <laughs> yeah, I, I really enjoy presenting and, you know, I guess I, I'm my future, I think I'm looking to teach pre-service teachers at uh, college because I want our teachers coming into the field to be engaged and have all these tools with them and just be excited and happy to do what they do. I, I feel like there's, uh, you know, I think it's in, society there's a lot of um a lot of us have been weighted down so we need to bring our happiness back <laughs> okay any any other questions thoughts no everybody's doing okay it was overwhelming too much maybe too much i i know sometimes when i do these i i give a lot to think about um and if you want me to show you how to use moat or anything like that, just let me know. I can, or how to um, have a slide go to another slide or that kind of thing. I, I'm willing to support you. And, and if you have any questions like that, as you go through trying any of these things and you wanna reach out to me, don't hesitate, just email me. I had, I had a couple of people email me before this even, uh, this event started and they asked me questions and asked me, uh, if there was going to be an archive and thing, I, they were like, well, thank you so much. So I, I do get back to you. I promise they will. <laughs> uh, yeah, feel, feel free. Great. Well, thank you so much. Tonight was great. Everyone, I want to thank you for joining us. Uh, let me stop our recording for now.